In today's video, I'm going to be fixing the worst Premier League club. But first, we need to decide which club is actually the worst. Well, if you ask Cristiano Ronaldo, he's probably going to say Manchester United. Okay, thank you very much. But nah, they're not the worst. Could be Nottingham Forest, but they survived this one because they're 18th in the Premier League. Southampton are very close to being the worst, but they're 19th. It's actually Wolves who are 20th in the Premier League, effectively making them the worst Premier League club. And that's why Wolves have hired me to be their manager to make them the best club in the world. As the manager of Wolves, my first task is to assess the squad and I've kind of figured out why this team is 20th in the Premier League and there are actually three reasons. First one is João Moutinho at CDM. This ain't it, man. He's got 43 pace. By the time he tracks back, my opposition would have already scored. He'd be a great player to have on the bench, but not as a starter anymore. The second reason is Connor Cody leaving for Everton. I think he was club captain, right? Till losing a centre-back like that and replacing him with Collins, who's 75 rated, this ain't it. And the final reason is the overall squad depth. It is tragic, especially for a Premier League club. But you know what? It's not all dull and gloomy. There are still some good things going on for them. Goncalo Guedes is a top-class signing, trust me. Pedro Neto as well is quality. Nunes is certainly one for the future. And with the quality of Ruben Neves, with the right signings, I think we can make this team tick. And the good news is the board are backing us with about 61 million. And so, let's Let's get to work. And so I've made my first signing as Wolves boss and it's Inacio, a Portuguese centre-back. You're going to see quite a few Portuguese signings in this video because Wolves have a great relationship with that country. And so Inacio is our first signing. We've brought him in for about 35 million. He literally goes right into our team and that's basically the Connor Cody problem solved. We've got his replacement. With 24 million left, we still need to sign a CDM. I don't think 24 million is going to be enough for a CDM. We need to generate a bit more cash. Over 65% of you guys watching my videos haven't subscribed yet, so what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 600k. And so we're starting to sell a few players to generate some extra cash. Leo Bonartini has been sold for about a million. And this is a big one. Daniel Pudence has been sold. And we got a whopping 15.2 million for him. With all the player sales, we've got 41 million to sign that CDM we need. And for that CDM position, with the money we got, we've managed to sign Edson Alvarez. I think this is a really good signing. We got him for 26 million. 26 million for an 80 rated player, 24 years old. I mean, it's it's perfect. He gets right into the team and already I feel our team is looking a lot better with Inacio and Alvarez. Moutinho on the bench is going to give us a bit of depth and now our squad is looking decent. Although we still have about 15 million left, we're going to keep that for January. It's now time to get the Premier League season underway. The first season is going to be all about just figuring out the team and what the game plan is to make them the world's best club. I quickly realized why this team was 20th in the Premier League. Okay, that's a good ball in. And the header, what? How did that go in? We end up taking an L to Fulham to start the season. There's issues at this club. Even with the new signings we've made, we're just not playing good football. I think we need to figure out the tactics. First of all, Pedro Neto is a left winger. We're going to convert him to a right winger. That's the position I think we need him in. The system we've got, we need Raul Jimenez to be the target man up top. We're going to have Edson Alvarez to be the destroying CDM. Just stay back and make those crunching tackles. And I do want my fullbacks to overlap, but also to be smart when they do it. We're also going to change our build-up play to balanced. And of course, chance creation to direct passing. That's what really works for me. And looks like all the tactical changes we made really worked well. Ait Nori might just go all on his own. Oh my god, our left back, Ait Nori. That's our first goal that we've scored. And it's an absolutely memorable one. Come on. Where there's with a lovely pass for Nunes. Ruben Neves squaring it for Pedro Neto. And there's the finish. Lovely stuff. Took us a couple of games, but we've got our first win on the board. But most importantly, I've pretty much figured out how I want to play with this team. As I get through the first half of the season, I quickly realize who my star players are. Oh, Pedro Neto through on goal. Should be a simple finish. And it is. Pedro Neto is a future superstar. Good stuff. Brilliantly done. What a goal from Nunes. Yo, what a midfielder. 
Neves, simple goal for Ruben Neves. Come on. Whatever tactical changes and everything we had done, our key players were shining, Wolves as a team was chilling, and we were fifth in the Premier League after 14 games. Players like Goncalo Guedes, Ruben Neves, Pedro Neto were all shining. I'd say the only weak point in our midfield and attack was Raul Jimenez, but everyone else was absolutely balling. From being the worst club in the Premier League, it looks like this season we might be able to challenge for top four. It's incredible with how a couple of signings you can just change your club. But as things were going this steady, of course, there was bound to be issues. And it's a massive, massive one. PSG have come in and have basically taken Ruben Neves away. For 69.4 million, PSG have signed Ruben Neves. Our captain, our leader has betrayed us by joining PSG. He's gone. He's actually gone. Ruben Neves to PSG. But if I'm being honest, Ruben Neves deserves a move like this. We can be as hurt and disappointed by it, but that's what's going to happen when you're not an elite club. The big clubs are going to take your star players. It's our job to figure things out without Ruben Neves. With Neves gone, we've already dropped down one spot to sixth in the Premier League. But we're now in the transfer window and we need to get that Ruben Neves replacement. The good thing is we've got about 80 million to spend. With PSG signing Ruben Neves and already having the likes of Vitinha, I think we can maybe be a bit opportunistic and try and sign Renato Sanchez because he ain't going to be getting any playtime there at PSG. I think he'd be willing to move to Wolves. But I'm sure you guys know this, negotiating with PSG ain't ever easy. Looks like we've managed to get them to agree to a 34.4 million deal, which I think is a steal for Renato. We've got that Ruben Neves replacement. It's Renato Sanchez. Good price, but I think we shouldn't be comparing him to Ruben Neves. Very different kind of player. We're gonna have to change up the way we play. We saw Nunes is very, very good and I think we're gonna make Nunes the kind of player to play in that Ruben Neves role and we'll give Sanchez more freedom to go forward. That Ruben Neves money has still left us with a good 45 million, I think we should use that to improve the team. And so we signed Diogo Dalot from Manchester United. This was a bit tricky to pull off because he's expensive, but we did a swap deal with Johnny and it worked out well. I don't think we can ever replace Ruben Neves' presence in midfield, but we've invested well with Renato and Diogo Dalot and I think we're ready for the season ahead. I gotta say though, even with all the money we've spent, the absence of Ruben Neves was felt. Okay, Raheem Sterling is too quick through the middle. Who's gonna stop Fight. him? He went for a fake shot and shoots again. Bro, how is Sterling so good? Dino's on the ball. Oh, what is that? What is that defending? Ah, oh. We really are struggling to control the middle of the park and that's resulting in so many chances for our opponents. To make things worse, we even lost Edson Alvarez for the rest of the season because of a torn hamstring injury. From having Ruben Neves in our midfield, we've had to downgrade to Jao Moutinho and that's not good. And with the absence of Ruben Neves, our charge towards a potential top four in the first season completely gone. But even though our form dipped in the second half of the season the good thing is towards the end we finally were figuring out how renato fits in to our team renato sanchez go on okay looking for that ball in for pedro neto now raul jimenez and what a goal that was started by renato sanchez i must say where there's looking really quick good pass Renato Sanchez now in scoring position and that's what he can bring you. He's just so dynamic. And so we end the season still being seventh in the Premier League, but I think we learned a lot this season. Goncalo Guedes is the man to build our attack around. He was unreal and so was Pedro Neto. We're sorted with our wingers. Nunes as well. He grew massively up to an 84 overall. Look at Ait Nori's growth up to 81. It's been a season where we've taken the worst team in the Premier League to seventh and next season, we're going to try and take it one step further. It's time for the second season with Wolves. And I just went through my squad and I couldn't believe the improvements I'm seeing. Look at Nunes, Guedes, Pedro Neto and all. Every player in this starting 11, 80 plus overall. Even the bench is good. We've got players like Connor Cody returning to give us some squad depth. I think we did incredibly well finishing 7th last season and just establishing a great foundation. Now we got to build on this. And whoa, to do that. 
that the Wolves Sport are giving us the money, 100 million. They want us to finish in a Champions League spot this season. We almost did it, well, until Ruben Neves got sold. But now, no excuses, we gotta make it happen. One thing's for sure, guys, we need a new striker. I don't think we're gonna reach the heights we wanna reach with Raul Jimenez, so I am putting him on the transfer list. And yes, Raul Jimenez has been sold to Aston Villa. Some good money coming in too. Okay, I do not know how feasible is this, but I wanted to splash the cash and make a statement. Rafael Leao's contracts expiring at AC Milan. Can we convince the Portuguese international to be the star of our project? Bro, I think him and striker, we'll need to convert him to a striker, but if we can do that, he will be actually goaded. Well, let's try and pull this off. The big positive is that his contract's expiring, so maybe if we undercut by like, you know, 72 million or something, AC Milan might be forced to sell. And yes, 72 million for Rafael Leao. We're getting a superstar for season two. What a signing this is, boys. Rafael Leao at Wolves. Like, absolutely insane. The fact that we got him for 72 million, but he believes in our project. Oh, this is such an L. It'll take about a season to convert him to a striker. Oh my God. I think we should make him like a center forward for now, because that'll take only seven weeks and we can adjust the formation. Well, this is kind of how we'll play, I guess. Still got about 47 million. And Jao Moutinho has actually left us. So we're really lacking squad depth. So let's see if we can maybe get a midfielder or two in. And so we've signed Joe Willock for 19 million to give us some depth in midfield. 77 rated. I think it's a solid signing. And that's our window done. Rafael Leao and Willock joining the team. I think this squad is ready. And if you look at it this way, we should be able to get top four with the team as good as this. But it all depends on what happens on the pitch. Our first game of the Premier League was against Chelsea and it was a chance to make a statement. Rafael Leao, could he get his first goal? Brilliantly done. Laying it off for Guedes and he taps it home. Let's go. This front three I think is going to be special. Oh, and Goncalo Guedes is once again going for it. This might be his season. He is looking virtually unstoppable. And now Rafael Leao is showing what he's all about as well. The pace, unbelievable. And the finish as well. His first of many at Wolves. That thrashing of Chelsea had convinced me that this season, we've got something special going on. Guedes, Leao and Pedro Neto just work. Oh, Rafael Leao, he's gonna score. You can't stop him. You cannot stop him. Here we go. Pedro Neto now looking to join the party. He's gonna cross this one for Leao. Simple finish. Our front three just combined so well. But even after all that, we were still only sixth in the Premier League. Literally, we're the squad that have scored the most goals in the Premier League. Like, look at this. Guedes, Neto, and Leao scored a combined total of 38 goals this season already. And we're in December, mind you. But defensively, we're leaking way too many goals. As much as Jose Sar has done an okay job up until now, I think we need an upgrade in that goalkeeper position. Meanwhile, we did complete the player sale of Jose Sar, 29 million to start Rene. The deal will go through as soon as the window opens. I can't lie, it's tough to see Jose Sar leave because he was such a crucial part of our team for that first season getting us that seventh spot but if we want to take things one step further because i see the potential in us this season to get top four easily we need to deliver and bring in a new keeper and so we've got 54 million to bring in a world-class keeper and take this team to the next level we're seventh in january right now but you know what all is not over we're just four points off the top four with a goalkeeper signing i think things could change plus if you guys haven't realized we did qualify for the Europa League this season and we did manage to top our group. I have found, I think, what could be the perfect keeper for our team and it's Diogo Costa, the talented Portuguese keeper. Although it does feel like we're basically building Portuguese FC, Guedes, Leao, Neto, Sanchez, Nunes, all Portuguese, Inacio and Dalot as well. That's what, seven players including a potential keeper. We'll have eight players in the starting 11 Portuguese and we're an English club. But hey, that's what Wolves do in real life anyways. The Diogo Costa is now a Wolves player. 43 million, I think is a good price. Putting him into the starting 11, and now this team looks like a Champions League club. But we'll 
need to give it everything to make it to the top four. With Diogo Costa in goal, we were able to keep a lot more clean sheets, and in the attack, the trio did their job. Goncalo Guedes, Goncalo Guedes. Oh, he is so freaking good. So, so good. Rafael Leal looking to join the party himself, and oh, that is superb. Off the post and in. We also saw the difference Diogo Costa made in big games. Van Dijk said, oh, what a save from Diogo Costa. That's what I'm telling you, having a great goalkeeper and goal gets you. Everything was coming together in the second half of the season. I mean, the way Leal was playing, unstoppable. Oh, Rafael Leal, that fake shot. Oh, he gets taken out, and that's a penalty. Leal earned it, and he's gonna take it, but you guys know how random penalties can be? Nope. Oh, come on. Well, that's one way to stop Leal. Penalties. He may not be able to score penalties, but on the pitch, you can't stop him. You really just can't. With all of that and our form being incredible, we fixed our defensive issues, but because the other clubs have been so good too, we've only managed to climb up to fifth in the Premier League. But all is not over. We can still get Champions League as long as we win our final game and Manchester United drop points. There was no way we were bottling our chance to get Champions League football. Nunes and Renato, it falls for Rafael Leal and it's a scrappy goal, but sometimes you need those. If you thought getting Champions League would be this easy, well, we had a big setback. What just happened there? No, our hopes and dreams could be crushed because of this goal. Pedro Neto cutting inside is so good as he looks for Renato Sanchez and that's why we signed him to make those runs into the box. That could be the goal that gets us Champions League football. But all of this kind of meant nothing because Manchester United end up winning their game and once we heard the news we conceded a late goal and it was all over. Well this is how the final league tables look like. We finish fifth in the Premier League. Fourth come Manchester United. To not get Champions League with the team we've got I still can't believe it. But all is not over. We've made the Europa League final and if we can beat Napoli in this game we make Champions League for next season. This could be our saving grace and an opportunity to get to the Champions League where I feel we deserve to be. We were terrific in the Europa League, knocking out the likes of Porto, AS Monaco and even Braga. Our job here is simple, win the Europa League, our first trophy and get into the Champions League. Back inside, it's Rafael Leal laying it off once again and a proper chance for Goncalo Guedes. He wasn't gonna miss, he scored in the final for Wolves. Sending Rafael Leal through Renato Sanchez, what a ball. Leal with the cheeky chip and that's the goal to win us the Europa League. And so we've made Wolves Europa League winners. Not bad for the worst Premier League club. The team we've got, man. Like, look at Guedes' stats. Leao as well. Pedro Neto. Nunes has assumed that group in Neves role brilliantly. Everybody did their part this season. But for season three, we need to take it one step further and maybe go for the Premier League title. We've got the worst Premier League club to win a trophy and now it's time to take it one step further. I need this team to be ready to win the Premier League title. With 166 million, we can make some serious investments. To win the Premier League, I want to sign a player who's won the Premier League, and that's Fabinho. I'll be honest, Edson Alvarez has done well, grown well, but if we want to win the Premier League, we need someone better. And so we've managed to convince Fabinho about our project, and he's joining Wolves. He believes we can win the Premier League title. Yo, I can't lie, signing Fabinho for 50 million seems like a good deal. Well, even the game thinks that. That's what I call a serious upgrade to the team, but we're not done yet. Yes, I've gone ahead and signed David Alaba. You might be thinking, why on earth would you sign a 32-year-old centre-back for 43 million? Well, first of all, that price, I think is decent, and I genuinely believe having the experience of Alaba is going to help us out. Kilman is still going to be the main man eventually because he's still young, but I think we'll, we'll need the experience of David Alaba. And with that, I think our team is ready for the season ahead. We're banking on experience to help us out. Let's go ahead and win the Premier League title. Well, before the Premier League begins, we had the UEFA Super Cup final against PSG. A good test to see whether we can survive in the Champions League. The answer so far is no. PSG destroyed us and Ruben Neves played as well. I guess this team is still not there yet at the level to win the Champions League, but we will be there soon. Our goal for this season is absolutely clear and it's to win the Premier League and the team is ready for the challenge. And Rafael Leao is through again. You can't stop him. You just can't. What a start to the season for him. Nunes. 
A water ball for Pedro Neto. Oh, that is superb. That is so well worked. We have a team. It's not an individual leading us. The complete team performs so well together. And look at that. We're in the fight for the title. Just two points off both Chelsea and Liverpool. But also, don't forget, we're in the Champions League this season. And oh my god, have things not gone well. Focusing on both competitions, I don't think our squad's good enough for that. We still have a chance to qualify, though. If we can beat Celtic and hope for a miracle between Leipzig and Villarreal, we could be through. But to make things worse, in a must-win game, both Renato and Nunes are out injured. Like, Renato's out with a sprained ankle, Nunes out with a pulled groin. It's nothing too serious. We have Joe Willock who can play ahead of Nunes. That's fine. But we're gonna have to play Edson, Alvarez, and Sentiment, and I do not like that. Uh, we need to improve on squad depth. That's maybe why we struggled in the Champions League. Without our two midfielders, we still need to beat Celtic to make it to the knockouts of the Champions League, but we had the worst possible start. This is bad. This is real bad. And we concede first. This is turning out to be horrendous. We could get knocked out of the Champions League. No way. Celtic have beaten us and we're out of the Champions League. Shock of the season. I can't believe this. We finished bottom of our Champions League group. This is embarrassing. And it's all down to the lack of squad depth. If we had our first team midfield, no doubts we would have beaten them. We're now in January and the idea is clear. With whatever remaining money we've got, we need to try and improve our squad depth as much as possible. Otherwise, winning the Premier League is just going to be a pipe dream. And so the first player we're signing for squad depth is Mahmoud Dahoud. I genuinely feel like there's no point signing youngsters for depth. Having Dahoud being 29, experienced, that's the kind of player we need available. With that, I think we've got almost all our bases covered for squad depth and we're ready for the season ahead. Of course, it's disappointing we won't be in the Champions League, but that does mean we're going to give it everything in the Prem. If we want to win the Premier League, we need to beat the contenders. Rafael Leao turns his man and and Bango, what a finish from Rafael Leao. Oh, Pedro Neto is rapid. Two on goal, 1v1, solid finish from Pedro Neto. Here we go with Goncalo Guedes, similar strategy. And Guedes as well gets on the score sheet against Man City. As I said, if we want to win the Premier League, we got to beat the former winners. We had an unbelievable second half of the season. The squad depth was there. Our first team was fully fit. And now we're on the verge of winning the Premier League titan all we need to do is get three points against chelsea and we'll have won the premier league one big problem in our game to win the title we do not have our first choice keeper costa isn't fit for this so we need to win the title with a 72 rated keeper the players know what's at stake and there isn't much pressure on us because we've basically wrapped up the title but they wanted to make it happen at stamford bridge oh what a ball for rafael leal and of course it's him rafael leal just cannot stop being the best player in the world Trust me, I think he's going to be a player that wins the Ballon d'Or. Nunes? Nunes! It's Nunes, the player to score the goal that's going to give us the Premier League title. Let's go! And with that, yes, guys, we had managed to win the Premier League title. What a dominant season this was. To win the title by nine points, incredible. Once again, Rafael Leao was just unbelievable. Fair to say we've made this Wolves team the best team in England, but to become the world's best club, there is still more to do. This is the season we win the Champions League and make Wolves the world's best club. To do that, it's not going to be easy because last season we ended up getting knocked out in the group stages. But I already have an idea what we need to do. Looks like the board are giving us 214 million to make Wolves a Champions League winning club. To start with, it's obvious our depth in the fullback position is a bit tragic. Let's improve that. Both Nelson Semedo and Connor Cody have left the club. All the more reason to improve squad depth. And so here's our first signing of season four. It's this place called Riddle Baku. I've never actually used him in career mode before, but he looks pretty good. We signed him for 33 million. He's actually 83 rated, man. That's awesome. And we've signed yet another Portuguese player in Rafael Guerrero. I think it's a good one as well. 81 rated left back. We take those. I also think we need a really good option for a backup winger, and I'm thinking Raheem Sterling. All depends if we can get him for good value. I'm offering 56. They want 71. Looks like 60 million has done the job. I still think Raheem 
Raheem Sterling, 30-year-old, in his prime. I think it's a good transfer. And yes, we've completed the signing of Raheem the Dream Sterling. Our bench is now going to look insane. Look at that. 60 million for Sterling. I'll take that. Look at that, guys. Every player in the bench, bar our goalkeeper, is 80-plus rated. We're ready for the season ahead. Although, that is a bit of a shock transfer I'm making. The centre-back that helped us win the Premier League, David Alaba. It's time to say goodbye. I got, like, a pretty good offer for him from RB Leipzig for about 32 million, and I thought it's the perfect time to cash in. He's only going to get worse. Let's use that money and sign someone insane. 115 million, and we're going to use that entire bit of money to sign a world-class centre-back. Oh my god, Ruben Diaz would just be perfect, especially with the Portuguese team we've got. We need to try and make this happen, but my god, is he worth a lot of money. 97.5 million. Let's go with the 97 million offer. Bro, this is hilarious. We offered 97 million. They want Raheem Sterling in return. What are we doing here? Unfortunately, guys, Pep Guardiola kicked us out. Ruben Diaz is out of our budget. Unless we work on selling a few players and generating some cash. We sold Ryan Gillis, a backup left back that we don't need for about 7 million. And now we've sold Huang Hee Chan after signing Sterling for another 15 million. So I think this extra cash should be enough to sign Ruben Diaz. This time, I think we do have the money to make it happen. 110 million for Ruben Diaz. Let's go. That works. So there is the highest rated player we've signed in this video so far. Welcome, Ruben Diaz. With Ruben Diaz coming in, I think that's it. Our team is ready to try and win the Champions League. Let's give it everything. We do end up winning the Community Shield, by the way, which is a nice trophy to add to the collection. But yes, this season, everything now is about the Champions League. Let's find out our group. Okay, Inter and Leo. This group might be a bit interesting. We need to start off strong. It's now time to kick off our Champions League season against Inter, and we needed to make a statement. But this is how we started the game. No, they've got a chance, and no, no, no. Could this be the same story as last season? Inter take the lead. But unlike last season, our team is a lot better, and no way are we getting grouped. Oh, lovely ball for Pedro Neto. First touch and the finish. That's what we're talking about. Equalizer. Rafael Leao with the chance to win this game. Looking for Nunes. Opening up some space. Back for Rafael Leao. It's superb. And in the 90th minute, Wolves take home the three points. This is why we're coming for the Champions League this season. And that comeback gave us the momentum for the rest of the group stage games. Okay. Okay, Guedes. Okay. Oh, that's too easy. It's too easy for Goncalo Guedes' pace. Go on, Rafael. Go on, Rafael. Should still get the second chance. Or maybe a third. And that goes in. That's what we need. And yes, with that, we have literally the perfect group stage campaign. Not losing a single game. We're coming for that Champions League. Yo, I can't believe this. Rafael Leao has just won the Ballon d'Or. Let's go, guys. That is absolutely amazing. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Now it's his job to get us the Champions League. Although in the Premier League, we aren't doing quite as well. But I think this season, everything has to be about the Champions League. We are in the trans window and of course, given the chance, maybe I'd love to improve our team, but we've got just 17 million left and there's nothing we can do with it. So we're just gonna go with the season head and trust that this squad can get us the big trophy. It's now time to completely focus on the knockouts and fulfill our goal of making Wolves the best in the world. But we've hit a roadblock because we've got Barcelona in the round of 16. On paper, that definitely looks like one of the most toughest draws, but I look at this Barca team and I feel they can be beaten. Although I was nervous to face Barcelona, don't forget we've got a Ballon d'Or winner in our team. And here we're sending Rafael Leao on the run against Barcelona. Of course he's gonna score. That's the why he's won a Ballon d'Or. Rafael Leao, of course he's gonna score. This time at home, Barcelona. Get that plane and get back to the camp now because you're getting knocked out. With Rafael Leao in the team, we managed to knock out Barcelona. But I don't get this. What is our luck? We get PSG in the quarterfinals. To be honest, though, if we can knock out PSG, we can knock out anyone. Against PSG, there was no easy way out. Everyone will have to contribute. Nunes, what a ball for Renato. Against this former club, of course, it had to be him. Renato Sanchez. Sending Rafael Leao. Yes, the Ballon d'Or went on. The attack should score this. Of course he does. PSG cannot compete against the world's best player. The test of PSG has been passed as well, and now 
in the semi-finals of the Champions League. We're up against Benfica and look at the other teams in here. Yo, this is our tournament to win. But of course, life is never this easy. Ait Nori and Dalot both get injured before the Champions League semis. Ait Nori is out for a couple of weeks and Dalot for about a week. I don't think both of them can play in the Benfica game, but they should be fit if we do end up reaching a potential final. It's so good that we signed Baku in the window and also Rafael Guerrero. We've got the squad depth to cope with this situation. Time to knock out Benfica. Even without our first choice fullbacks, we've got enough firepower to dispatch Benfica. Pedro Neto's on the run and Asi Rafaleo making a great run into the box. It's a simple tap in. We're coming to that Champions League final. Fabinho looking for Pedro Neto. I think he's kept himself onside and that should be it. We're heading to the Champions League final. And so it's Olympic Leo. We play in a game that could crown us the world's best club. We actually faced them in the group stages and we did pretty well against them. Meanwhile, in the Premier League, we completely fumbled it. We gave everything in the Champions League, meaning we finished sixth and not a good title defense. But ultimately, it's the Champions League we want now. What a season, though, for the likes of Pedro Neto, who's actually our top scorer. Rafael Leao, Guedes, the front three we've got. Just unbelievable. This is the team we've built over these four seasons. Let's get that Champions League trophy. I'm absolutely nervous for this, boys. We're playing the biggest game of our career. Let's win this. Having a Ballon d'Or winner in your team definitely makes life easy as we start off incredibly well in this final. Rafael Leao's fake shot was unbelievable. And in the first five minutes, the world's best player, Rafael Leao, Ballon d'Or winner, strikes first. Olympic Leo look rattled. I can't lie, on paper, we're so much better than them. But in a final, anything can happen. And this is literally why. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Leo, out of nowhere, they've just got the equalizer. I thought after 1-0, this game's done. Leo had our front three locked up in this game. We needed something special to come through from the midfield. And well, that's exactly what happened. Pedro Neto, look at that run from Nunes. Can he score? He's actually scored in a Champions League final. Matias Nunes, the man who had the responsibility of replacing Ruben Neves, becoming captain of the club. He has done it in a Champions League final. And after the second goal, the floodgates opened. It was all over. Rafael Leao have the floodgates opened up. Leao is going to be unselfish here. Let's get it done. Guedes scores. Olympic Leo let everybody forward and that cost them. And yes, guys, we've done it. We've won the Champions League with the worst Premier League club. It's taken me a few days to record this. Four seasons as well, but it's worth it. Worst Premier League team to the best Premier League club. And not just the best Premier League club, but the world's best club. This was amazing. If you enjoyed me taking Wolves to the top, I'm sure you're going to enjoy me make Chelsea the world's best club. Click here to watch that.